At the end of the last chapter, we were mentioning that the peripheral nervous system branches off from the central nervous system. We have cranial and spinal nerves that branch off and innervate different regions of the body on the peripheries. And it turns out that that peripheral nervous system is really crucial for two main things. It allows sensory input to be carried to the central nervous system and it allows motor output to be carried away from the central nervous system back out to the different parts of the body. And if we're talking about that motor output, the motor neurons of the peripheral nervous system, it turns out they come in two different varieties. There are what we would call somatic motor neurons. Those are the motor neurons that allow us to control our skeletal muscles voluntarily. And then we also have another type of motor neuron. And in addition to the somatic motor neurons, we also have what are called autonomic motor neurons. And this chapter is going to be completely devoted to the autonomic nervous system. And just to kind of set the stage, when you hear that word, Word autonomic, I'd encourage you to think of automatic. They sound similar and and it kind of is the same idea. The autonomic nervous system takes care of a lot of things that um, that we don't have conscious control over. So things that are happening automatically, like for example, controlling the rate that your heart beats at, um, controlling the smooth muscles that are throughout the body, bl blood vessels, how dilated are they? Um, so a lot of smooth muscle control, uh, glands also, glands are under the control of the autonomic nervous system. So um, let's just, let's start taking a look here. The autonomic nervous system, one of the big differences between it and the somatic motor neurons that we're kind of more used to thinking about, um, one of the big differences is just how many cells are involved. So in the case of somatic motor neurons, um, what we were dealing with was cell bodies that were in the central nervous system and then axons would branch out into the peripheries and go and make a synapse with perhaps a muscle, skeletal muscle. But now, here we are in this chapter talking about the autonomic motor neurons, and these actually involve two neurons. So the first one, the first cell body, is in fact in the central nervous system. So here's the first cell body. That has an axon that goes out of the central nervous system and it synapses with another cell. This is a neuron, another neuron. This is a neuron that exists um, in a, a ganglion. This is a word that is referring to a cluster of cell bodies that's outside the central nervous system. So I'll be showing you some pictures later on, but kind of on the sides of the spinal cord, there are gonna be all these ganglia that exist. And that's where a lot of these um, autonomic ganglia are hanging out. So anyway, one neuron synapses with a second neuron. This is called an autonomic neuron. And that autonomic neuron would go and synapse with something um, that, it is, that it is regulating. So this could be something like a smooth muscle, or it could be cardiac muscle, or it could be a gland. So in any case, it's something that's not voluntarily controlled. So we call it an involuntary effector. And this is the, the whole big job of the autonomic nervous system is to regulate these involuntary effectors. So this is a nice table for comparing and contrasting um, these two different types of motor neurons that we've been mentioning. So we're kind of, again, used to thinking about somatic motor neurons. These allow us to control skeletal muscles. But now here we are this chapter, autonomic motor neurons. These are gonna be more of our focus. So some of the big differences, just what are the things that are being controlled? Skeletal muscles versus other types of muscles and glands. Um, the ganglia, in the case of ganglia, Somatic motor systems do not involve ganglia. It was just a single neuron that went from the central nervous system out to the skeletal muscle that we were dealing with. Now we do have ganglia present. So we've got these clusters of cell bodies um, and we'll, I'll show you the location of those coming up in a little bit. So again, one neuron involved for somatic motor control versus two neurons involved for autonomic motor control. Um, slightly different types of junctions um, with, with the effectors. Um, what else do, should we point out here? Oh yes, this is an important one. Okay, so when we were talking about somatic motor neurons, so things that can activate skeletal muscles, always the impulse that is sent down the axon um, and then the signal that's released at the synapse, that's always an excitatory signal. It's something that causes an excitatory postsynaptic potential. 
in the cell that's receiving the signal. Not necessarily the case now in this chapter. So the signals that get sent, they can be either excitatory or inhibitory. And this is referring back to the postsynaptic cell. What sort of a postsynaptic potential gets generated? Is it excitatory or is it inhibitory? We're going to see examples of both. And this is a good point to just sort of mention the overall role or effect of the autonomic nervous system. Its, um, its role is primarily to control things like rates. So how, how quickly is the heart beating? Is it, does the heart need to speed up or does it need to slow down? The autonomic nervous system is not necessarily making the heart beat. In fact, the heart would beat automatically even without any nerve innervation from the autonomic nervous system. Um, but rather the, the, the whole job of the autonomic nervous system is, again, to control that rate. So very different function in terms of the autonomic motor nervous system versus um, somatic motor nerves. So with that in mind, what happens if one of, of the nerves is damaged or, or cut? Um, in the case of somatic motor neurons, this leads to complete paralysis of the muscle. The muscle would no longer be able to con contract. We would have no way of getting the signal from our central nervous system down to the muscle. Um, in the case of the autonomic motor nervous system though, that's not necessarily the case. The muscles will still work. They will still contract. It's just that their rate would not be necessarily controlled. Um, we wouldn't necessarily be able to make the contractions stronger or weaker. They would just kind of happen on their own spontaneously. And we'll be seeing how that's possible when we talk about muscles in a later chapter.